Today's video features some pretty amazing small batch single serving dessert recipes. You know for those days when you're craving something sweet but you don't necessarily want to bake a whole tray of cinnamon rolls only to have half of them be stale by the next day? First up is this single serving tahini brownie that just like melts in your mouth. Preheat the oven to 180 degrees Celsius. Grab either a ramekin, cup or small bowl and add in two tablespoons of vegan butter. Place the butter filled ramekin into the preheating oven and allow that to melt for a few minutes. Meanwhile, in a small mixing bowl, combine all the dry ingredients. That's all-purpose flour, a pinch of salt, some baking powder. Check out this adorable baking powder I found in Portugal. Anyway, also some, some unsweetened cacao powder goes in here as well as some sugar. Next, add in the now fully melted vegan butter, along with applesauce, vanilla, and last but not least, also some non-dairy milk to adjust the consistency. Pour the brownie batter into the buttered ramekin, smoothing out the top a bit, and then setting that aside, because now in a separate bowl, you're quickly going to combine all the ingredients for the tahini. So that would be white tahini, powdered sugar, and a tiny bit of non-dairy milk. Now add three to four little scoops of the tahini mixture on top, and then using a knife, just swirl the two parts around a bit. Yeah, now all you gotta do is bake this for 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah, to be honest, I, I was hoping for a cute pattern here. This tastes unbelievably fancy, especially together with that vegan vanilla ice cream. If you're wondering about using a microwave here, I haven't tried baking this in a microwave yet because I don't, I just don't have one. But if you're a frequent microwave user and you'd like to volunteer as recipe tester, feel free to give this a try and let me know in the comments how long the baking took and what the outcome was like. Thank you so much. I've tried my hand at can you say that? I I've tried my hand at a caramel a few times in the past, but this one is by far the easiest and yummiest one I've ever been able to put together. First off, you need some dates, but no worries. This is not your average basic date caramel, trust me. I'm using the Diglett Noor dates as always. They're my favorite and they're rather cheap compared to Majol, for example. Allow them to sit in the water for 10 to 15 minutes. Drain the dates and then transfer them to a high-speed blender together with all the other ingredients. I'm using coconut blossom syrup here. You could also do brown rice syrup or maple syrup. Also add some softened vegan butter, some vanilla, and drum roll please, a bit of white miso paste. This won't make your caramel taste like soup, no worries. Instead, the miso gives it this rich saltiness that, you know, a, a regular pinch of salt just can't. But yeah, blend everything up for a few minutes until completely smooth. And there you have it, a super versatile batch of salted caramel that you could dip fruit or cookies into, have with some ice cream, some porridge, perhaps a bowl of muesli. This here was soy yogurt, strawberries, candied almonds, I went to a fair recently, and puffed quinoa. A bunch of people over on Instagram asked for a single serve banoffee pie, and so that's for sure another great way of using up some of this caramel. To make the crust, I crushed up some vegan butter cookies inside a small Ziploc bag. Slapping them with a spoon worked best actually. I then transferred the cookie crumbs to a bowl and added just some non-dairy milk. Just enough for the mix to have that texture of coarse wet sand. Then I transferred that to my ramekin and using wet fingers, I pressed down onto the crumb mixture, dragging it up the sides as well. You do not have to be perfect here since we're going to be hiding most of this anyway. Underneath a layer of miso caramel, banana slices, and you could do whipped cream here, but I just went for plain soy yogurt. This was so nice, especially in combination with this iced coffee, where basically the hot coffee drips straight into a cup, 
filled with ice cubes. This way, the coffee cools down instantly, so it should be at room temperature once the ice has melted, and then you can add some more ice to cool it down even further, and finish that off with a bit of milk. I'm using oat here. Okay, next up, we have this one-person matcha banana bread. Coat a small ramekin bowl mug, it's gotta be oven-proof, with vegan butter and preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius. Using a fork, mash up a small to medium-sized banana. Measure out 90 grams of the mash and then transfer those 90 grams to a bowl. Along with all the other wet ingredients, we got some white wine vinegar here some vanilla, some sugar. I'm using powdered randomly, but you can use any type. In a small glass, combine the matcha powder with some hot water. I used a milk frother here. A small whisk or just a spoon should also do the trick. Um, just make sure that there aren't any, any matcha clumps left. Add this dissolved matcha mix to the banana bowl as well, followed by some melted vegan butter. Now add the remaining dry ingredients. We've got flour, baking powder, salt, and a tiny bit of cinnamon. Transfer that to your prepared ramekin bowl mug, and then bake this for 25 to 30 minutes, or until when you poke it with a knife, it, it comes out clean. Let the bread cool for at least 15 minutes before running a knife along the edges, and then flipping that onto a plate. I didn't use the nicest, brightest looking matcha powder, which is why my cake had this moldy brown color on the outside, but that's okay. It's what's on, on the inside that counts. Also, I think I was definitely able to save the presentation with a bit of uh, vegan sour cream, strawberry, and some rice syrup. This next recipe yields two to three little panna cotta treats. Even though it's of course plant-based, it still has that authentic jiggle that I was hoping for. Lightly grease two to three small glasses with coconut oil or vegan butter. Grab a small saucepan, but don't put it on the stovetop yet. First, just add cornstarch and aga aga powder to it and a third of a cup of non-dairy milk. Whisk that all up until completely smooth and then pour in all the remaining ingredients. Whisk until combined and then finally you can place the pot on the stove. Turn the heat to medium high and keep stirring as it heats up. Once it reaches a boil, turn the heat to medium and allow this to simmer for another two to three minutes. Mixing continuously, that is the most important thing. Just, just keep mixing. And then pour the mix into your prepared glasses. Allow the treats to cool down a bit on the counter and then as soon as they're not piping hot anymore, you can put these into the fridge to chill for at least one hour. To help you remove the panna cotta from the glass, you can place it into a bowl filled with hot water. Just keep it there for like 30 seconds. I, I still had to go in with a knife carefully. For serving, I made a simple strawberry sauce here. This had the perfect consistency. It, it tastes so good, especially together with the strawberry sauce. What a treat. All right, on to the perhaps most anticipated recipe of the day. Three adorable cinnamon buns. They're not baked, but heat is still involved since we're gonna be steaming them. Here's my friend's WhatsApp testament to these. Warm up the non-dairy milk until it's just below boiling point. Then transfer the hot milk to a small bowl and add some vegan butter, unsweetened applesauce, vanilla, and sugar. Give this a quick mix. Now the temperature of the milk should be cooled down a bit at about 40 to 45 degrees Celsius. Sprinkle over the dry active yeast. Place this bowl in a warm place covered for about 10 minutes. In the meantime, you can measure out and combine the dry ingredients, which that's just flour, salt, and cinnamon. 
Once the yeast mix is slightly frothy, you can add it to the bowl with flour and combine everything with a spoon. Transfer this to a floured surface. Knead until it's not so sticky anymore for about five minutes. It really helps to have lightly greased hands while kneading. While the dough is rising, you can already start setting up your steamer. So I tested out a hack that I saw in a YouTube video a while ago, and it worked perfectly. The video says to roll a few sheets of aluminum foil into balls, and then to place those inside a medium to large pot. The balls of foil are going to help elevate your steaming container so that you can pour water underneath it. My steaming container was this little metal lunchbox. Roll up the buns now. Transfer the dough back onto a floured surface and give it another quick knead. Use a rolling pin, a glass jar, a wine bottle, or even your hands to stretch out the dough into a long rectangle. Spread it with either some vegan butter or some nut butter. Then sprinkle over some cinnamon sugar, of course. And now roll up the smaller side. And then cut this into three somewhat equally sized pieces. Now place these into the heat proof, steam proof container. Pour in your water and allow these to steam for 30 minutes. I also ended up adding another piece of foil over the cinnamon rolls because I was worried that too much water would drip down from the lid. <laughs> this feels like chemistry class. If you have a regular steamer, just use that how you would normally use it. You can pretty much serve these right away. Here I'm making a glaze by combining some vegan sour cream, rice syrup and non-dairy milk. I know working with yeast can be a bit annoying. There's a lot of waiting around and paying attention to temperature involved, but it's so worth it. Like these were so good, I wanted to cry. But yeah, that is it for today's recipes. Let me know which dessert I should make miniature versions of next. I've done one single serving type video before, I'm gonna link that down below if you're looking for more ideas. Next video, I may or may not have a special announcement to make, so keep an eye out for that. And for now, I'm just gonna leave you with yet another quirky outro song. So yeah, have a good rest of your day! Bye! Okay.